About a week ago, I had shared with you guys a video of my experience with phone scope adapter on my Swarovski 30 to 70 times 95 spotting scope. And since that adapter didn't work for me very well, I went ahead and picked up on Amazon this NXYZ uh, product, Celestron NXYZ 3 axis universal smartphone adapter. Um, thinking that that might serve me better than did the phone scope. Uh, so here's a little bit of an unboxing. Uh, it's pretty simple. It comes with the unit itself. The manual, you can take a screenshot or read through it if you're interested. Um, the packaging itself is, um, as you saw earlier in the video, um, it has a relatively uh, thick foam all around. Um, the packaging also came with these perforated rings, two different sizes. I did not dive into too much what these things are for. Uh, maybe you can um, let other users know in the comment section what these rings were for and how they assist. But uh, this is the first time on video that I am... Uh, opening the box for you guys, I hadn't tried it before. I hadn't uh, put it on my uh, Swarovski scope. Prior to purchasing this next, um, keep forgetting the name, next YZ 3-axis adapter, I watched a few videos. Um, most of them were pretty poor quality and uh, a little old. So I decided I would share my experience with you guys just in case someone else is looking at this product. How I came across it, I was on my Instagram the other day and it just uh, came up as an ad on my feed. And after I had looked at the construction of it and saw that the precision movement, you know, on all three axes, I thought this is exactly what the phone scope adapter was missing you didn't really have a, a way to fine-tune uh, for the precise location so that the camera on your phone in my case it's the iPhone 10 would align with the uh, uh, with the eyepiece on the telescope so um, I figured this is exactly what uh, what's needed so again, for the first time with you guys on video, I uh, took out my Swarovski telescope with my BTX um, module on it. And the first time trying it, I immediately realized that for my particular uh, telescope and with this particular module with the BTX, you cannot really place this Celestron Next YZ adapter so that it remains in a 90 degree position, you know, so that you're shooting your video uh, in landscape. Um, that's what you should do anyways. So you can see that area is hitting the forehead rest piece and it does not allow it to go all the way to the 90 degree as it should so i figured okay let's try the left side although your video picture would end up being flipped i figured maybe there is a way to uh, flip the video in post-production although i've never had the experience to do so but i'm sure there is a way in uh, adobe premiere at any rate so i'm taking out my iphone 10 a uh, nice thing is uh, you don't have to take your phone out of the uh, case. Uh, the width on the adapter is quite, uh, allows you uh, enough of a space to place your phone uh, in its case, at least the case that my phone is in. Um, so I thought that that was neat. And then I started playing with it when I zoomed in my telescope, or not zoomed in, when I pointed to a flower in my front yard and I'm trying to dial it in and I'm noticing that the adapter under the weight of the telephone and I guess its own weight it just slides down so I thought well that's odd for such a seemingly rugged and a well-constructed device 
uh, why would it slide? So here's another shot from the side. And as you can see, in some areas it holds on, but in other areas it moves. And in relative terms, it moves quite a bit. I mean, when you are trying to use, you're hoping for a precision where a fraction of a millimeter would play a role and for this thing to move on its own, under its own weight for several millimeters like this in a couple of different spots on the rail, that is uh, absolutely unacceptable. I wish there was a, either this thing needs to be better built uh, to a more uh, precise tolerances uh, so that the movement, first of all, from all the way at the top to all the way at the bottom is consistent. Um, I can tell you right now, having felt and moved this knob um, a lot of times, even as you see it in the video, um, it's a little bit more difficult at the top and the bottom of the rail, but in a couple of places, the thing just slides down on its own. Um, here's the view from the back again. Also, I was looking for a way to uh, maybe there is a um, um, some kind of a knob or a, some kind of a tightening screw that I could screw in to help uh, maintain this thing, uh, sort of dial in the tension, if you will. But I didn't find no such thing. If you have, uh, uh, if, if, if there's something I missed, please uh, let me know in the comments section. Um, anyways, um, also on the left hand side, it you're not at least I didn't, maybe I didn't put it to a 90 degree angle. Um, anyways, uh, my expectations of this product were um, a lot more than what I got. Um, I like the idea of what they did with being able to precisely dial all three axes, but I suppose because of the poor uh, worksmanship quality, um, you're not you're not really getting that good of a quality of the product frankly speaking and again this is for myself this does not apply to everyone might not even apply to most people is um, if this product was well made and they were to charge it twice than what they're selling it for. And by the way, it sells for about $60 on Amazon. I ordered it on September 16th, excuse me, on uh, August 15th. And today's August 19th, first time I had to try it. Even if this thing was costing me $120, $150, but if it was made uh, to a lot uh, tighter specs, a lot higher tolerances, I think this could be, uh, you know, quite the thing. Uh, it would be an amazing product, even though it's bulky and everything, but who cares? All you really need, all you really need is for this thing to uh, uh, sit on your telescope and adjust and uh, you would have no problem with it. Also, I noticed it's interesting, even though you've got the full length of the rail from, up to uh, from top to bottom, as you can see here, the head of the unit or the clamp where it clamps onto your eyepiece, uh, if it's in the position where it's too close to the back, see how it kind of bends backwards. So realistically, even though you do have seemingly a large spread, how much you can dial your phone in correlation to your eyepiece, in reality, let's say if your eyepiece needed to be in this position, then you're never utilizing uh, the full length of the rail as it relates to the top and bottom axes. So it is that much, um, that much uh, travel that you're unable to utilize if your um, eyepiece, if your phone needed to be in the position where the clamping is over the backside. So anyways, just kind of wanted to show you guys um, everything in 4K, uh, share my experience with you, kind of show you the product in case you are considering uh, purchasing it. It may work in your application, but in my specific case with the BTX module on my Swarovski, it did not work. So, sorry to say this product is heading back to Amazon and uh, otherwise, thanks guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll chat soon again. Bye-bye.